this is where I came from and this is what he's done for me I once was here but now I'm there there was a time when the doctors told me this but then look at the miracle that happened in me somebody gotta know what I'm talking about I've been through something I've been from somewhere please you're not gonna make me afraid Ever wonder how does the word apply to your life? Can it change you? Yes, it can. The word of God can change your life. Thanks for tuning in. I believe these next 30 minutes are going to change your life. There's nothing like confidence. All of us want confidence. We want confidence to come from our hair. We want confidence from co to come from having ab muscles. We want our confidence to come from uh, spray that we put on our body. I want you to be confident. And if anybody ought to be confident, it ought to be Christians. It ought to be people who read the word and study the word of God. And that confidence shouldn't come from the outside. It should come from within. How do I get that inner confidence? How do I know that I cannot be shaken? Stay tuned. We're going to tell you how. We're going to get you the answers so that you'll know how to have the confidence that you need for your life. When the old mothers used to say, run on, run on, see what the end's going to be. That's where I am. I've come too far. I don't know about anybody else, but I have come too far. I have been through too much. I have been through too many things. I'm not going back. I'm not, I'm not going back. I'm not losing my confidence. Now, when I first looked at this passage, I never really knew what it meant. I got, I got a great analogy of it, and I've shared it before, and I just feel like sharing it again tonight. You know, I'm living here in North Carolina. I love it, but one of the things that happens is you can't drive down a road in North Carolina without seeing dead stuff on the road. You can't. And I used to be really upset about that and uh, really feel like that's wrong. And, and I don't know how folk are just hitting animals until you get a nice car. When you get a nice enough car, when you're whipping a hoop, you don't really care. But when you get something nice, something that you wash, something that you whack, something that you want to keep clean, when you get something decent, you begin to realize why squirrels especially get hit in the road. And I, I've hit some squirrels. I never really hit squirrels before until I moved to North Carolina. I've hit quite a few, and I'm so sorry if you're an animal lover. I don't mean to hit them, but, but it, it comes down to a choice between that squirrel or my car. And if it's a choice between that squirrel or my car, I'm sorry, that squirrel got to go to squirrel heaven and see squirrel Jesus because I'm not about to mess up me or my car for a squirrel. And if you've ever seen a squirrel, and if you've ever hit a squirrel, you know that this passage, this verse here in 39, verse 39, it, is, is it verse 39? Yeah, verse 39. It'll remind you of a squirrel because this is the last time I hit a squirrel. What happened is I'm coming down the road and the squirrel is trying to cross the street. There, I'm on a two-lane high. It's a two-lane road now. There's traffic going this way, traffic coming this way. The squirrel comes from here. I saw him. He came out. I saw him as he was coming. And what happens is he's coming out and then as he when he gets to he gets past my right tire. He got past my right tire, but then as I got closer to him, what happened was he doubted whether or not he could make it all the way across. If he had just kept on running, he'd have got to the other side. But what happened is when I got close to him, he got nervous. Then he started zigzagging and he turned back and went back and he actually got hit by my right tires. As he was coming, I was saying, yeah, keep on coming. Keep on going because I got somebody behind me and there's somebody coming. Out. Just keep on going. I was telling him, just keep on going. Just keep on running. Just keep on going. But then when he hesitated and stopped, I started saying, no, no, don't go back. Don't go back. And then bump, 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 bump. And the next thing you know, I looked and I said, well, that's where, that's what happened. 
And see, that, that's a word for somebody that's exactly where you are. You have run and you have come across. And then what happened is when the enemy bears down, when the difficulty bears down, you get a scared and start shrinking back. And if you shrink back, you go bump, 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 bump. But what I'm telling you, what somebody in this room is trying to shout at you, we're telling you, put your head down and keep on running. You have come this far, just keep on going. You have come, matter of fact, the Lord told me to do this tonight. Just put your head down and just keep on running you have come so far you just don't even look at the danger don't don't even look at the situation put your head down and just keep on running you have come too far to go back this is not the time for you to lose your confidence don't be like that squirrel where does that confidence come from Because confidence like this, you can't fake it. Real sees real. And the devil knows if you just fake or if you really ain't a scared of him. He's like a dog. He can smell fear on you. And you got to know where your confidence comes from. You got confidence? Now let's hold on to it. Where does my confidence come from? There are four places where my confidence comes from. Okay? I done preached. Now let me teach you. There's four places where my confidence comes from. The first place, and the first place is the deepest place. It is the most bottommost place of where my confidence comes from. It is the bottom of my foundation. I love the fact that y'all sang that song tonight, Hosanna in the highest, that you're the rock of my foundation. There is a rock. Have you ever had a rock in your shoe? If you have a rock in your shoe, you have to stop and get it out. You can shake it around, but it, it will bother you. That, that's me. At the bottom of me, there is a rock that I'm standing on, and that rock is God. His word. That, that, that is the most bottommost place where my confidence comes from. It's at the bottom. It's the lowest. I can't go below that. I know him too well. I know his word. And I'm looking at what his word says about me. So what his word says about me defines me. Very difficult for somebody to mess with that because it's at the bottom. And I can't even really take credit for it because I've been taught it since before I could even talk. And if you're in this room and you had parents that taught you the word and taught you who God was and taught you what his word said about you, oh, they blessed you. They did something for you. If you went to Sunday school, you might have been there and you're not even really, you never even really used that information. But now that you're saved, it is activating on the inside of you. But that's the bottom most place where my confidence comes from. Okay. Then the next level up from that. Okay. The second place where my confidence comes from is my, I have confidence in God. Then I have confidence in me, really in whom he has made me, who I am in him. Not necessarily who I was without him, but with God, if with, in Christ, I can do all things. So I have a confidence that says, well, maybe if I was by myself, I'd be in trouble. But with the Lord, now that I'm saved, now that I worship, now that I have a relationship with God in him, I can have confidence in me now because he's with me. So I have confidence in who I am in him. I'm confident in what he has done for me. If you're in this room and he's ever done anything for you, there's a confidence that you have. I know, I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. You, you know he loves you. You know he'll do it. You, you, you have a confidence. There's a confidence you have in yourself. He loves you. So I have confidence in me. I have confidence in where I have come from. I've had too many experiences, and the experiences I've had has changed me. I'm not the same person. You understand? I'm not the same person. I'm not who I was when I was 20. I got babies now. Having babies changes your perspective. 
Then, so that's, that's, that's the next level up. Then there's another level up from that where my confidence is in. The next level up from that is who's with me. I'm confident because of who is with me. I'm confident because of the company I keep. It's one of the reasons why you got to change your company because if you got jacked up company, then you can't have confidence in your company. You have to have have confidence in the people that you're around. I'm surrounded by people that know how to pray. I'm surrounded by people that know how to believe God. I'm I'm not by myself. I'm not doing this thing all by myself. I have confidence that I can do it because I'm not by myself. I have confidence in the company that I keep. I have confidence in the community, the team that I'm on. I don't go someplace by myself. I go places deep. When I was growing up, that's what we used to say. You go somewhere deep. You don't go somewhere by yourself. You go deep. You show up with numbers. You got more confidence when you got a bunch of people with you. There's a confidence that you have because of who's around you. Okay? And then the next level up, the, 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 the highest, the, the top, it's not the deepest. It's not the most, yeah, the highest place of where my confidence is, is I have confidence in the gifts. Meaning I have, I have confidence in my ability. I have confidence in my talent. I have confidence in my expertise. I do have a gift. I do have an ability. I do have an expertise and I have confidence in it. You ought to have confidence in your ability. You ought to have confidence in your talent. You ought to have confidence in your expertise. When they ask you, can you do this job? You should say, yes, I can do this job. You you should be like, I don't really know. No, you ought to say, no, I have confidence. I know what I'm doing. I was on a 700 Club, and when I walked in, I walked into the studio like I own the studio. You know why? Because I own it. That's why. Am I going to act like I'm a skirt? And they asked me, are you afraid? And I said, am I afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I'm not a skirt. This don't scare me. I'm confident in my ability. I'm confident in the gifts he's given me. You ought to have confidence in the gifts. Every gift comes from him. So you might as well, he's the one that gave you the gift. Be confident in the gift. Stop faking it like you're not confident. I don't really know. I hope it turns out. You know, you know, you know it's going to turn out good. Just go ahead and tell him. I told him this is going to be an amazing interview. I said, this is going to be one of the best shows y'all ever had. For many people, that's where the, that's the foundation of their confidence. Their bottommost place of, of their confidence is in their ability and in their gifting, but that's the lowest level of it for you. You have confidence in your abilities and your gifting, and then under that you have confidence in the people that are around you and who's with you and who's on your side and who's your team. And then under that you have confidence in who you are and who God has made you to be, and then under that you have confidence in God. You can't lose confidence because there's too many layers of it. Even if you bump into somebody that's got more talent than you or got more gifted than you or maybe has a little bit more ability than you, you still have confidence because you just got to look around and see who's with you. And so you say, well, maybe you can preach better than me, or maybe you got a little bit more confidence than I do. Maybe you, maybe you have a little bit more ability than you, but I probably got a better wife than you do. So I pull my wife up, and I'm like, bang, how, what, do you, what do you think about that? Ha, that's why I have her come up here. I have her come up here every week, because I want everybody to see, bang, look what I got. Bang, look what's on my arm. Bang, ha, now, try that. Oh, here goes my worship. Here goes my minister of music. Here goes my friend. Here goes my staff. Okay, here's Nate. Boom, look who's with me. See, that's the next level down. See, if they got somebody to match that, then I say, oh, well, this is where I came from. And this is what he's done for me. I once was here, but now I'm there. There was a time when the doctors told me this, but then look at the miracle that happened in me. Somebody got to know what I'm talking about. I've been through something. I've been from somewhere. Please, you're not going to make me afraid. There's a confidence that you have because of where you've been. You've been there. You came through there. I remember when I was living back in Boston and I was, uh, there was a guy I was ministering to and I was, I was visiting the prison a lot because I just, I love dudes really. I was just, men is just my heart. And, and really what happened was there was a woman in, in the church I was preaching in and she had a nephew who was in prison and she wanted me to go visit him. She kept bugging me, go visit my nephew, go visit him. And just to get her off my back, I went to visit him. 
And he was a big dude. He was a guy who robs drug dealers. Okay, yes, exactly. And that's what he was in prison for. He's a big 6'4 dude. He's in prison for robbing these drug dealers. And so I went to visit him. He knew I was a preacher. I went to visit him. And after that first time meeting him, I just liked him. He was a hard dude. He was a serious dude. He looked at me like I was crazy. And I just sat there with him for about an hour, and I just talked to him about nothing. I didn't say nothing to him about the Lord. Not a thing. I came back two weeks later to see him again. He's a captive audience. <laughs> he can't go nowhere. He don't want to just sit up there. He wants a visitor. I came back to visit him. Got a little card where you can buy a sandwich. I bought him a sandwich. I sat there and talked to him about him. just nothing. Eventually, I introduced him to the Lord. He got saved. He got out. He came to stay with me. I sent him to Bible school. Anyway, when, I got, when he got out of prison, and the Lord did a miracle for him to get out, when, when he got out of jail, it was a miracle. This, this, anybody seen a miracle for real miracle? Okay. See, you, you can never make me doubt God because I've seen miracles take place. This dude was supposed to do seven years, and he was in, he, was, he went in just for a hearing to figure out how much of the time he was actually going to have to do. He was going to have to do this time, some piece of it he was going to have to do. And me and some of the other young dudes with me, Bruce was there, and we were sitting in the back, and we were just holding hands, praying for the judge. We were just saying, Lord, do it. God, move. God, do something. God, open up a door. God, make a way where there is no way. God, just do something. Lord, we don't, we, we, we've been ministering to this dude. At this point, Bruce had been with me. Tucson, we had went. And at this point, it's, he's been in there for about a year at this point. We've been visiting him and visiting him and visiting him. He said, you got three, you got three more months on this thing. When those three months are over, that's it. You're done. He said, I don't know why I'm doing this. Anybody ever heard somebody say, I don't know why I'm doing this? When he said, I don't know why I'm doing this, I said, oh, it was everything I could do not to go, ah, ah, ah. I don't know why I'm, somebody about to hear that. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm about to do this. Something down on the inside. What is that? That's God, baby. You want to talk about somebody that believed God could do anything. And he was always trying to get me to go with him to the projects where he came from. See, when you are from someplace, it don't scare you. And so when you've got confidence in God, God, and you have confidence in yourself and where you're from, and you have confidence in the people that are with you, and you have confidence in the gifts and the anointings and the talents and the abilities that you have, you can't be shook. You trust in God. And so, for me, it, 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 there's no way I'm going back this is the least amount of money you are ever going to make for the rest of your life. Everything after this, going to be more money. I'm talking to somebody. More money, more money, more money, more money. This is the least. You ain't going back. Your next job is not going to be a going back job. You're going to make more money. I'm speaking that for everybody in the room. Anybody that wants to claim it, it's more money, more money, more money. You're going higher. You're not going lower. You're going higher after this. Your next step is going to be a better step. You're not going back. You're not going back. You're not going back. Your next love is going to be the love of your life. I'm speaking that right now. Your heart is not going to be broken again. That's a word for somebody. This next dude is going to be the dude right now. The next guy is the guy. He's on the way. I, that's, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't say this all the time. I'm telling somebody he's on the way. You better get yourself ready. Go ahead and get your hair done now. Go ahead and join the gym now because he's on the way. Don't wait till he gets here to join the gym. Go ahead and join the gym now. Go ahead and start working out now. Go ahead and start eating right now because he's on the way. He is coming. I'm prophesying. He is on his way. He's coming. He's coming. 
He's going to come when you least expect it. And you better be ready when the bridegroom comes. You better have your lamp. You better have some oil in your lamp. It's a word. It's a word. It's a word for somebody. He's on the way. You're not going back. I'm declaring that in the Holy Ghost tonight. You're not going back. You're not going back. You're not going to be sadder. You're going to be happier. You're not going to be more lonely. You're going to have more friends that you ever had. You're going to have more friends that you've ever had in your life. You're going to have more money than you've ever had before. You're going to have more success than you ever had before. This is your turning point. This is your moment right now. Reach out and grab it. This is your time. This is your season. This is your moment right now. This is your time. This is your season right now. This is your moment. This is your season. This is your time. It's now. It's not tomorrow. It's today. It's today. It's today. It's today. You're going higher. You're having more after this. Don't lose your confidence. You're getting ready to receive right now. The Bible says, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. That means that people have confidence and actually throw it away. People can have confidence and actually lose confidence. And certainly, if I'm reading the Bible, if I'm studying scripture, if I have a relationship with God, the last thing I should ever do is throw away my confidence. But if I'm leaning on the wrong thing, if my confidence is in the wrong thing, then that may be a part of the why I'm so, uh, why I'm so quick to throw it away. I know that we used to say my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I, I want to know, okay, what should my confidence be built on? And when you tune in with us week to week, you get this series. The announcer is about to come tell you how to get it. We'll actually tell you step by step what your confidence should be based on. Shouldn't be based just on how you look. Shouldn't be based just on the education that you have. Those are great things. But you want to make sure that your confidence is in something that cannot be shaken. And I want you to have that. Ha. I want you to know that you know that you know that you won't fall, that you can't be shaken. And as we take this journey together, you are gonna find that your confidence is gonna grow and that you're gonna know who you are and you're gonna be more aggressive about having the kind of life that you're supposed to have. So stay tuned. We're gonna talk about how you can gain this confidence. You wanna get it right now. It's gonna change your life and you're gonna be exactly who you were always supposed to be. Consider your life right now are you the person you want to be? Are you happy, at peace? When trouble comes, do you handle it with no worry, no stress, and no fear? Do you believe that you're living on purpose? When you see yourself in the mirror, do you feel confident about who you are in every way? These thoughts, these core beliefs, this kind of certainty describes a life that comes from knowing your identity in God and walking in kingdom confidence. Because I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who I belong to. I know what he told me. You know what he told you. You know that he saved you. You know that he called you. You know that you're special. You know that there's nobody like you. You know there's a reason why you're here. You know you're a miracle. Consider what's lacking in your life right now. Are you ready to live a life where nothing is lacking, nothing is broken, and everything is finally made whole? This life can be obtained today, right now. Sound too easy? Well, today, Pastor Andy Thompson is going to reveal how you can take action and build a life on the rock of godly self-assurance. That's right, and it all starts with getting today's broadcast in its entirety, unedited, uncut, the full and complete electrifying, life-changing message called Kingdom Confidence. This full-length message will expose the steps successful people know to increase kingdom confidence and how easy it is for you to understand how to seize every good thing God has stored up for you and how to reach the boldness to secure a kingdom-style life. This is where I came from, and this is what he's done for me. I once was here, but now I'm there. There was a time when the doctors told me this, but then look at the miracle that happened in me. But this message is just a portion of the three-step system Pastor Andy wants you to get today to create the life you deserve. When you call right now, you'll receive the complete Kingdom Confidence System. In this system, not only will you receive the message you heard today, but you'll also receive two more life-changing presentations. 
and you can trust Him, Pastor Andy will show you exactly how to put your full faith in God and rid your life of insecurity and insufficiency forever. Next, in the message, Stay Confident, Pastor Andy reveals the secrets to maintain your confidence in the midst of difficulty. These are the same steps Pastor Andy has shared with top athletes and business executives to help them unleash the strength they need. Now available to you for the first time. No matter where you are in life, you can attain greater levels of confidence from the content in this system and see success in your marriage, your children, your finances, and your faith. Normally valued at $35, Pastor Andy is offering his television viewers this complete Kingdom Confidence System today for just $25. That's right. Now you can get all three messages, Kingdom Trust, You Can Trust Him, and Stay Confident for only $25. But this offer just got better. Today only, when you order the complete Kingdom Confidence System for your love gift of $25, Pastor Andy will send you the live presentation, Just Run, absolutely free as a bonus gift. If you're serious about becoming the best you possible, then what you'll hear on this DVD will jumpstart you to your brand new life. So you get the complete Kingdom Confidence System and the live presentation Just Run for your love gift of $25, all delivered in Pastor Andy's unique and infectious teaching style. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to let Pastor Andy help bring out the greatness in you by releasing your Kingdom Confidence. There is so much in you just waiting to be discovered. It's time to escape the trap of inferiority and walk in the image and victory of God today. Don't wait. Call now. I know there's nothing as difficult as your confidence being shaken. Things can happen in life. You lost your job. A storm came through. Someone got sick. The person you felt was going to love you forever left you. I know. I've been there. And I also understand that as a result of my relationship with God, my confidence can be restored. I can find myself back to who I was always supposed to be. Nothing can give you confidence like having confidence in Him. And I'm seeing it. I, I'm loving the fact that we are on this journey together. People connecting with me on Facebook. Folks are, are connecting with me at PastorAndy.com, following me on Twitter. And together, we're talking about newfound confidence. Uh, someone is saying, yeah, I believe. I can get that job. I can get that promotion. I believe too. I believe that the God I serve is able to deliver me. And what the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it around for my good. That all things really do work together for the good of us who love God and are called according to his purpose. Together, we're called according to his purpose. We're in this journey together. We're connected to one another. And we're going to find that God is building us up. We are the bricks in the kingdom. He's working on us. And together, we are the family of God. Thanks for tuning in with us. I want to see you next week. We're going to talk about what it means to walk by faith, not by sight.